There are a lot of things you can do in Minecraft, but because there are so many, there are also sometimes things we end up forgetting. So to help you remember, or maybe teach you something new, these are 28 Minecraft things you should start doing. Also, we're super duper close to 500,000 subscribers, so if you could subscribe, it'd help out a ton and mean a lot. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy. Number 1. Finding diamonds is hard, and no one wants to spend hours strip mining only for a couple of diamonds. But don't fear, because you can find diamonds super easily. All you need is a river and some clay. This is probably the coolest trick ever. If you find a clay patch in a river, Congrats, cause you just found diamonds. Simply locate the center of the patch, go two blocks positive in the Z direction, and just mine down. Eight out of ten times, you will find a diamond vein. It's easy as that. Number two. If you've ever built a farm in Minecraft, you've probably built it something like this, with water in the center. But if you've ever wondered if you can spruce up your farm design a little, well, you can. You see, crops can hydrate through anything, it doesn't have to be farmland. Your plants will grow just as well if separated by stone, coral, or even air. Yeah, crops can hydrate through straight up air. Pretty cool and useful if you ask me. Number 3. On the topic of mining, let's look at another cheap trick. You may or may not know that if you set up a piston above a composter and push yourself in, you can locate the nearby caves. But that's not the end of it. You can actually do the same thing with gravel, which is much easier to find than the iron and redstone required for a piston. If you want a better use than just finding caves, you can locate the portal room of a stronghold this way, which will definitely save you a lot of time. Number 4. Creepers suck, don't they? There's nothing worse than a long day of mining only for a creeper to suddenly erupt and make you lose all the stuff you've been carrying around. But these things can be super easy to kill if you know how. Because explosion damage is calculated from distance to your feet, if you place a block in front of you as a creeper explodes, you can minimize the damage taken. I mean, these things barely pose a threat anymore. Number 5. On the topic of explosions, the Desert Temple Trap. This thing can be a pain, especially if you just finished looting the temple and happen to trip over the pressure plate on accident. But there's no need to worry. If you're fast enough, all you need is a bucket of water. Just break the block where the pressure plate is, place water in the gap, and you'll take almost zero damage from the remaining TNT. Number 6. We can take the previous tip one step further. Assuming you didn't accidentally set off the trap, you can actually use it to your advantage. For example, if you're speedrunning and find a desert temple, you can actually loot it in seconds even with no items. Once you break your way down, break the block in the center and grab all the TNT. After that, just place one TNT in a corner of the chamber, light up the pressure plate, and hop back into the hole. Once you're in, you should be completely safe and enjoy as the TNT explodes all the chests around you, allowing you to loot all the treasure in seconds and take almost no damage in the process. Number 7. Buried treasure is even cooler than desert temple treasure, but it can sometimes be a pain to find. I mean, you think you're on the X, but you can't find the chest, and suddenly there's water everywhere, and it's just not fun at all. Well, it's actually super easy to find the chest. If you open up the F3 menu and locate the chunk section, look at the coordinates within the chunk. The chest always generates at 9-9. Using this, you can locate the chest hassle-free every single time and enjoy the treasure with no trouble. Number 8. Let's say you're in creative mode and build a piston door or any sort of structure and you misplace a block. Sure, you can build all the way around to reface it, but you don't have to at all. If you're on Java, just left and right click at the same time and boom, you can rotate any block just like that, hassle free. Number 9. Moving villagers can suck. These guys always seem like they don't want to cooperate with you. And who wants a mending book when it will cost you 5 hours of time maneuvering them around? But as per usual, it doesn't have to be this hard. If your villager has a profession, he'll follow you temporarily whenever you open his trade interface. Using this, you can actually get him to follow you through hallways and even up staircases. I really wish I'd done this earlier, it's really easy to do and can save a lot of time. Number 10. Have you ever built something high up and then realized you wanted to build a layer down but you have no water? Well, perfect, because there's another way to do that and it's pretty easy. All you need is two trap doors. If you go a block out and place a trap door on the bottom half of the new block, and then place another trap door on the top half of the old block, you can then get right on the edge and go into crawl mode. While you're there, shift right clicking on the top of the upper half trap door will place a block below it, allowing you to staircase or build downwards. Once you're done, just remove the trap doors and repeat to your heart's content. 
Number 11. After using a sponge to collect water, you may know that putting the wet sponge into a furnace gets you a dry sponge again. However, what you might not know is that once you have fuel in the furnace, you can then put an empty water bucket underneath and recollect the water. You can even do it all in one go if you have a lava bucket to spare since it automatically empties when you use it. Just make sure you put that excess lava fuel to good use. Number 12. Lava is the most abundant resource in the nether and water is the complete opposite. Apart from placing it in a cauldron, there's no other way to get water in the nether. Or is there? Using a glow lichen, if you place down lava and then a glow lichen on top of it, it will actually form water in the nether. Sadly, this glitch only works in several snapshots and was recently fixed. But hey, if you want to break Minecraft for your friends, this is a good way to do it. Number 13. While searching for something in the ocean, it's oftentimes hard to see underneath the surface. However, if you toggle into F5 mode while in a boat and slowly move your camera backwards, you can adjust it so that your view somehow removes all the murkiness, illuminating the ocean floor for you to see. This is used by a lot of speedrunners to locate an underwater stronghold, and you can do just the same thing. Number 14. The same thing works in lava, and not just water. Building in lava can suck, especially if you don't know what's around you, but if you set up a slab on the bottom half of a block over a lava lake and splash yourself with fire resistance, you can pop underneath and see the entire lava floor without any blur or distortion. This is great for mapping out nearby terrain and giving you a good idea of how much space you have for your fiery contraptions. Number 15. Minecarts are a fun way to travel but can end up being pretty expensive when you have to craft so many powered rails. And what's the point of building a roller coaster for your friends if it leaves you broke afterwards? Well, luckily it doesn't have to. If you place a pig with a saddle in a minecart, it becomes a superior form of transportation. You can control a pig with WASND and they can go as fast as powered rail minecarts but on regular rails. Not to mention, it can climb up and down slopes with no problem. Plus, it doesn't even need the rails, that's just a bonus to go faster. Now your coasters can be exotic, custom, and most importantly, cheap. Number 16. We've all heard of secret painting entrances, and at this point, it's getting kind of old. I feel like whenever I see a painting, it's instinct to try to walk through it. But there's a few ways to stop potential intruders. You can set up trap doors in certain ways behind the painting to make it harder to get through. If you set them up like this, you'll have to wedge yourself in in the correct place, which is actually pretty difficult. If you set them up like this, the player will be forced to jump and crouch at the same time to get in. Or, if you really want to give them trouble, make a hole in the bottom so they have to elytra glide through the painting. But that's assuming they don't just break the painting or go around. Number 17. If you're on the run and need a safe place to spend the night, then composters might just be your best friends. All you need is one of these bad boys and a trap door, and you've got yourself a temporary base. Just pop the trap door on the composter and close it in on top of yourself, and bam. Mobs can't hurt you from the outside and you'll be safe from all incoming danger. This can be great if you're low on food or you just want to safely AFK while the farm is running. Number 18. Chorus fruit don't seem like that good of a food source, but they're actually really useful. You see, chorus fruit will actually teleport you to the nearest solid block in an 8x8 area, or a random one. Meaning, if you're falling from a great height or even into a pool of lava, eating one of these will teleport you back to safety, even if you do have to extinguish yourself after. So the next time you're in the end, grab some of these to keep handy at all times. They'll probably save your life one time. Number 19. An often overlooked block is the campfire. I mean, this thing is literally an infinite furnace. At least for food, so maybe an infinite smoker. It doesn't require any fuel to use and can smelt all your meat for you. And if you accidentally put it out, no big deal. All you need is a silk touch shovel, and once you break it, you'll have a relit one ready to use. Not sure if this is a glitch or just a helpful feature, but it definitely comes in handy sometimes. Number 20. Let's say you pillared upwards and finished your new flagpole, but you suddenly realized you have no water bucket to get back down, and breaking your newly built pole is not an option. Well, don't fear. Using honey blocks, TNT, or really any block but those work best, you can descend any structure by placing and breaking them over and over. Because they both destroy instantly, this works really easily and can help you a lot if you don't want to spend that much time going down. And it's safer than an MLG in the first place. Number 21. On the tail end of that, what if you were digging straight down and wanted a really easy way to get back up? 
If that's the case, all you need is sand, a trap door, a button, a bow, and some water. If you set up this mini contraption with the sand blocking the water and then dig down safely in a 2x1 hole, you can shoot the bow back at the button when you're done to get rid of the sand and let the water in, creating a miniature elevator in your mine. Super useful if you ask me and can save you a lot of time getting back up. Number 22. There's a ton of prisons going around on YouTube and you want to make one of your own but they're just so massive. Well, there's actually a really easy solution. You just have to beat the Ender Dragon... twice. Okay, maybe not that easy. On single player, if you have a few end crystals to spare, that inescapable prison dream will become a reality. Just begin the dragon summoning ritual by placing in the four end crystals, but as the towers are respawning, log out and log back in. You can then push the new end crystals with pistons all the way through the portal and back home. The best part? They're now completely indestructible, so trapping your friend in a room with one of these will make it nearly impossible to get out. Yeah, pretty easy prison. Number 23. As you could probably tell from this video, trap doors are super useful, and they have even more potential benefits. If you place them facing inwards as walls, you can make an animal pen that mobs can hop into, but for some reason they can't hop out of. It's a strange and cool feature, plus it has no effect on you, so this could be your new pen if you want. Number 24. Using a chicken on a lead and some carefully adjusted boats, you can make a completely safe void platform. A home in the void. Just break the block with the chicken on it, leash it to a fence, and then adjust all the boats so they go neatly in the corners. Now break the slabs underneath the boats. Hitting F3 and B to toggle hitboxes can help in breaking the slabs. Once you've finished, you'll have a nice habitable spot to relax in and enjoy the abyss. Number 25. Lingering potions can be expensive. I mean, you need Dragon's Breath, and even then you can only make so many. But if you have a Creeper, that will do the job just as well. If you throw any Splash Potion onto a Creeper and then blow it up, it will leave a lingering effect of whatever that potion was. Granted, I don't know when you'd ever use this, but it might come in handy. Who knows? Number 26. If you're making a map of your base and want to show it off, or just make it look nicer, consider this. If you rename a banner in an anvil and then place it down, right-clicking on the banner with the map will make a visible waypoint with whatever name you chose appear. Now you can label your world to make it easier to navigate or locate things. Number 27. Flexing on your friends is always fun. There's nothing better than knowing you have more diamonds and rubbing it in their face. But it's really hard to find ways to brag when everything you build out of diamonds just looks ugly. However, a really subtle but giant flex is to use jukeboxes as fuel sources. Jukeboxes require a diamond to craft, and you can actually smelt them as fuel in a furnace. So the next time you really want to rub it in how much richer you are, show your friends a super smelter completely powered by these music boxes. They're sure to be amazed and probably hate you afterwards. Number 28. Redstone can be tough sometimes, and going upwards or sideways isn't always the easiest. But it can be with the power of leaves. If you put a log underneath a few leaves, the game will actually update them so they think they become part of a tree. And this update can be detected by observers. For up to 6 blocks, you can use a line of leaves to send redstone signals, allowing you to make some really wacky and elegant looking contraptions. It's completely eco-friendly as well. But hey, that's that. Those are 28 Minecraft things that you should start doing. If you did enjoy the video, then please do consider subscribing. It helps out a ton, and I appreciate it a lot. According to YouTube statistics, I share a lot of viewers with this amazing channel called Skip the Tutorial. And, as you may have noticed, this video is heavily inspired by their format. So if you did enjoy this, then please go subscribe to them also, and let me know if you want to see more similar stuff by leaving a comment with your opinion. If this video does well, and it turns out we do share a big audience, then I'll continue doing more, but not that many, because I don't want to completely rip them off. But that said, thanks again, I'll see you next time, thanks so much for watching, peace out, and have a good one.